Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and I'm going to show you in this video how you can paint the Orc War Boss in Megarama in the Clan Colours of the Goths. I'm going to show you step by step how you can easily achieve a great looking miniature in the Citadel style used by Gaines Workshop. And I'll even show you how to paint Orc and Gretchen skin, the checkers, and then finish the tutorial with some fun techniques to make your War Boss stand out even more. I'll list the brushes and paints I use in this tutorial in the description below if you want to paint your war boss how I paint mine. If you enjoy my content make sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below what you think. It really helps my videos get out to more people and grow the channel which I would really appreciate. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram where I also post tutorials and you can see what I'm working on for my next video and also what I'm working on in my personal hobby. And I really want to see all the amazing work you're all doing, so make sure to share with me and others in the community what you're working on in the r slash tabletop ready subreddit. I want to make painting the war boss as easy as possible, and to do this I'll keep some of the parts of the miniature separate so I can get into all those hard to reach places. The parts of less separate are the head and back gubbins of the armour. I also make the decision to cut off the peg on the back of the chest plate because once we've undercoated the miniature it will become more difficult to fit into the hole it's designed to go in. The war boss is now ready to be painted. When it comes to painting characters I like to spend a little bit more time on them than I would if I was painting multiple miniatures in a unit. So for this tutorial I want to show you how you can achieve a higher standard for your characters. Let's get started. For this war boss I chose to use a Chaos Black Spray Undercoat as we're going to be painting the war boss in the colours of the goth clan which is mainly black. You may be tempted to start by painting the black armour first. You can if you want to but I know if we did that we may have to spend time redoing any work we've done while painting the other details on the miniature. So I want to begin by blocking in all the colours of any material and metal details. Start by using some Skaven Blight Dinge on the trousers and whenever you're painting it's a good idea to thin your paints first and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. You also want to avoid going over any areas you've already painted as your brush can create unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. It's also better to paint in multiple thin layers as well to prevent losing any detail on the miniature. So make sure your first layer is dry and then repeat the process until you have that nice solid colour we're after. The other colours I'm going to paint now are going to be Mephiston Red for the loincloth, Gretchen trousers and some of the wires. Still Legion for any straps, pouches and the boots. For the other wires you can use McCrag Blue and Avalon Sunset and then Doom Ball Brown for the huge dropper handle. I'm going to paint all the metallic details at this stage as well. For the metallics I use Iron Hand Steel, Iron Warriors, Balthasar Gold and finally Retributor Armour for any bullets. With all those colours blocked in we can create some definition using a wash. Using a wash is going to create some much needed definition, stopping the miniature looking so flat. But before we do that, take some time neatening up any areas that you may have been a bit messy while blocking in all the colours previously. We can now use a wash on these areas at the same time. To create the wash use some Norn Oil and an equal amount of Lamy Medium. This is going to weaken the strength of the wash so it doesn't dull down the colours we've already painted. Apply the wash to the areas we've painted in the previous step and use enough so it covers these areas comfortably. If you find the wash pulling up too much in areas you don't want it to, just use your brush to soak up the excess you don't want and wait for the wash to fully dry before moving on. Now that the wash is dried I want to finish painting the materials and metallics. I now want to finish painting the materials and metals we've already started before working on painting the war boss and Gretchen's skin, starting with the metallics. The wash we applied to the war boss has given us a soft shade across the miniature, but I do want to take this further on the metallic details using Agraxur shade as it is, and applying this directly into all the recesses and around any rivets. I'm also going to use Agraxur shade to create some interest to these areas giving the impression of built up grime and oil and this wants to be done on the flatter areas. Now finish all the metals with a Stormhouse Silver highlight. If you want to create any scratches you can just use the tip of your brush for this. I'm now going to work on all the non-metallic details by layering these areas up to the original colours we painted them. 
make sure to leave the shade still showing in the recesses and folds of these details. With that done, I now want to talk about highlighting and getting these details finished. When it comes to highlighting, you want to have as much control over your brush and the paint as possible. First of all, you want a brush that you can get a fine tip on, and I like to keep a brush separate just for highlighting. With the paint, I don't tend to thin it down as much either, because we're not building up in layers, but we still want a strong colour. And finally, I would recommend removing some of the paint on some kitchen paper first, as this will prevent any thick blobby lines due to an overloaded brush. Let's start by highlighting the trousers and boots. To create the highlight, all you need to do is paint thin lines on any raised detail and along any edges you want to stand out. For other details, you can get fancy by doing a two-step highlight. Let me show you on the loincloth and Gretchen trousers as they're both painted the same. Using Wild Rider Red, you want your first highlight to be a pretty thick line. Now paint a thinner line using Fire Dragon Bright. Let's move on to finishing the wires. For the red wires, use Evil Sun Scarlet and finish with Troll Slayer Orange. Highlight the blue wires with Calador Sky and then Femrisian Grey. I want to paint some black stripes on the yellow wires now and if you want to do this as well, start by painting some thin lines where you want the stripes to be. And then all you need to do is thicken these lines until you're happy. If you need to neaten them up, just use some Avalon Sunset. Then finish these wires with a highlight using your Shabti Bone. The last non-metallic area that needs finishing is the handle of the huge chopper. Start with a thick highlight on the wrap using Steel Legion Drab, and then a fine highlight using Screaming Skull. Highlighting does take some time to do, but as you can see it really makes a difference when painting. After painting, using washes and shades on your materials, they can have uneven finishes, with some places being glossier. So a little trick I've learned is if you use some Lamy Medium on these areas, it will give you a uniform matte finish. With all those details finished, let's get the War Boss and Gretchen skin painted. We're going to paint the War Boss and Gretchen skin differently, but both are going to start with the same base colour, and then I'll show you individually how to paint them. So start by painting the skin of the War Boss and Gretchen using Death Guard Green, making sure to get a nice even solid colour which we can work from. Now layer the War Boss skin with the Rook Flesh on the raised detail, making sure to leave the Death Guard Green still showing in the recesses. Next, create a wash using Beltan Green and an equal amount of Lamy Medium and apply this all over the skin of the War Boss and wait for it to dry. It's time to build up the raised areas of the skin and we can do this using Uruk Flesh again, but thinking about working up gradually from the wash skin rather than painting over it. Now do the same thing but with Ogren Camo, but this time only to define the features of the face instead of using sharp highlights. Try not to overdo this step, less is more. Let's finish the skin using Beltan Green to bring out the details by applying this directly into the deeper recesses and folds of the skin. I want to show you how to paint the tongue of the War Boss now, and you can use this step to paint the inside of the Gretchen's mouth as well. Start with a layer of Screamer Pink on the tongue. Now paint a layer using Pink Horror, and finish the tongue with a highlight of Fulgrim Pink. Any teeth around the miniature can be painted simply by using Sandry Dust to start with and then scream in school by painting thin lines you often see people do on teeth. Let's now work on getting the skin of the Gretchen done, and it's going to be very similar to the way we painted the skin of the War Boss. Start by painting the raised areas using Ogren Camo, then apply a wash made using Athonian Camo Shade and Lamy Medium. Use Ogren Camo again, and finish the Gretchen skin by defining the features using Kree Khaki. We can now add some finishing touches on the War Boss and Gretchen at the same time, and to make things easier, I glue the War Boss head in place before moving on. Start by painting the lower lips and Gretchen nose using Cadian Flesh Tone. Then lay these areas now with Kids Left Flesh. For the eyes, I use Mephiston Red, with a small dot of Fire Dragon Bright in the centre to finish. If you want to paint the nails, I'll use Incubi Darkness first. Then finish the nails with a highlight of Cy Bright Green. Now I've shown you how to paint both the War Boss and Gretchen we can finally get the Megarama painted. After all the painting we've done, you can see why I chose to paint the armour last because of how messy I've been. So the first thing we need to do is paint all the armour using a bad and black to clean up the mess before we can start to create some definition. 
and usually you would use a darker colour in the recesses, but for this you can't really do that with black. So thin down some rhinoctide instead, and use this in the recesses, scratches and around any rivets in place of a shade. This will help define the shape of the armour and give the impression of dirt and grime. I now want to show you how to highlight the mega armour in multiple stages the same way every metal would. The first highlight that I'm going to show you is a chunky highlight using Dark Reaper. This first highlight wants to be quite a thick line and this is going to help soften and bring out the next highlight we do. It's also going to help with defining the shape of the armour panel some more. Go around all the panel edges and I'm almost using the side of my brush for this highlight to get the thickness we're after. I'm now going to show you how to do a fine highlight. I'm using Femrys in grey and this highlight is going to bring out all those sharp edges making them easier to see. For a lot of the highlights you can use the edge of your brush and run it along that edge to create the highlight making it a lot easier. For the areas you can't do this just take your time and paint a thin line along those details to create the highlight. I'm going to finish off the highlights with a spot highlight and I'm using Blue Horror for this. Using the same techniques I've already talked about, pick out some of the more prominent edges and corners of the armour. All these highlights are really going to bring out the detail of the mega armour. You can go a step further if you want to, to impress your friends creating some texture as well on the armour using Femrisine Grey. Just use the tip of your brush and try and be as random as you can. It's better to do this with as little paint on your brush as you can. The armour is not only going to be black, goths also like to use red and white in areas. For any panels and details you want to be red, start with some Mephiston red. I then use Norn Oil in recesses and around rivets. Next paint a chunky highlight using Evil Sun Scarlet. After that Fire Dragon Bright is used to paint the highlights. The white details of the armour can be painted starting with Corax White. Now use some thin down Corax Stone to give a weathered look to the white and finish these areas with the highlight using White Scar. I now want to finish up by showing you some things that will take your war boss to the next level and really show how good at painting you are. You can't have goth armour without painting some checkered patterns, so let me show you how to do this really easily. Start by marking out a grid in the places you want the checks to be using some Corax White. Continue in with Corax White, fill in every other square. Now use some Abaddon Black to finish the checkered pattern and neaten up the Corax White squares. If you want your big shooter to have some muzzle burn, you can do this starting with some Drukey Violet on the gun barrel, and then Drakenhof Nightshade where the Drukey Violet finishes. And finally you can use some thin down Mornfang Brown to paint any rust onto the armour. The Orc War Boss is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence to go away and paint this miniature yourself. Make sure to go and check out my other Orc painting tutorials in my Orc playlist where I'll show lots of other things to get your miniatures painted. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give the video a like and let me know in the comments. And if you don't want to miss out on future tutorials, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.